Anyway, there's lots to get to. Let's get to it. First, we have to start with Michael Cooper. This is a story that broke yesterday, November 1st. And Michael Cooper says, in leaked audio, Trudeau official comes clean on $1 billion slush fund claiming outright incompetence, free money, sloppiness and laziness, and more abuse and waste of taxpayer money by Trudeau's corrupt liberal government. So this was part of the article that was released yesterday. It was outright incompetence. Whistleblowers secretly recorded civil servants slamming federal green fund. And Radio Canada CBC provided with secret recording concerning Sustainable Development Technology Canada. So Sustainable Development Technology Canada is where this waste, this, this sloppiness is stemming from. Because of the whistleblower's audio recordings, the Auditor General is getting involved. Stephen points this out. This is a Globe and Mail article, so take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> Auditor General to probe conflict of interest, governance, breach, allegations at Sustainable Development Technology Canada from Globe's Jeff Jones. And here's the, here's the CBC article about this. And quote, it was free money. I just want to start kind of, this is halfway through the article. It's kind of buried. I'm going to read the beginning of the article, but I think this is an important piece to highlight, okay? By late, by late July, uh, McC McConaughey was convinced certain spending decisions were badly handled, including the payments of nearly $40 million during the pandemic that was not based on precise needs and did not require follow-ups. Quote, it was free money, he said, before making an analogy with the controversy that affected John Cretchen's liberal government in the early 2000s. This is almost sponsorship scandal level kind of giveaway. Throughout the process, the public service worked on the basis that the final decisions in this matter would be the responsibility of the innovative uh, on the innovation minister. Still, McConaughey and his public service colleagues tried to direct the political response, or at least temper it. So we've got a huge, huge scandal. Money being given away, public money being given away at sponsorship scandal level levels. And... This is just kind of plodding slowly through the news. It's not a bombshell until Polyev picks it up yesterday. Here's a bit more color on what happened. And, uh, and then we'll, talk, we'll see what Polyev's done with this. Doug McConaughey, McConaughey, the guy I was just talking about, laid out his unvarnished thoughts on August 25th, unaware his words were being caught on tape. Commenting on a fact-finding report he just received, the assistant deputy minister at Innovation came down hard on the senior leadership of Sustainable Development Technology Canada, a foundation in the middle of a five-year billion-dollar funding deal with Ottawa. There's a lot of sloppiness and laziness, there's some outright incompetence, and you know, the situation is just kind of untenable at this point, he said. Speaking with a member of a whistleblower group, McConaughey predicted a fiery reaction when his minister at innovation, Philip Champagne, would get briefed on the report. The minister is going to flip out when he hears the stuff he's going to want, and he's going to want an extreme reaction like shut it all down, predicted McConaughey. Back in late August, the whistleblower who had filed the complaint against SDTC still hoped for management overhaul and the launch of a full-fledged inve investigation. In their complaint filed earlier early in the year, they allege a series of conflict of interest and a number of potential cases of mismanagement of public funds at the foundation that subsidizes Canada's clean tech sector. Clean tech. It's, it's a boondoggle. It's false. It's a fugazi. It's fake. In one of my, back to the article, in one of my taped conversations, McConaughey fueled their hopes saying there was a consensus in the federal bureaucracy that the that SDTC's management team was on the outs. It's unlikely that certain members of the board or the entire board and executives are going to be able to continue to serve like they've kind of lost the confidence. So really the discussion will be the mechanisms for getting them out, he said in late August. You can actually listen to the recording here. Um, if you're interested. The, the very preliminary COI regime uh, by not uh, being uh, prudent fiduciaries, like it's just a board failure altogether. So, and just before that, he's talking about the mechanisms to get them all out. But that collapses. Back to this. More than two months later, however, SD... TC's management team and board of directors remain in place. The government has even called on them to implement a series of reforms in response to the whistleblower complaint and the investigative work of Raymond Shabbat Grant Thornton, the external firm that produced the report into various shortcomings at SDTC. In short, the very people who were in the crosshairs of the public service at the end of August were entrusted this fall with resolving the issue that aroused under their reign. Could you just fix this for us? You guys, we know you guys did this and broke this, but could you fix this? People have noticed. <laughs> But they didn't remove them. 
Hours of recording. In response, the whistleblower provided Radio Canada with hours of recordings of conversations with senior officials in a bid to force change in the government's approach. So far, the whistleblowers believe the government served them a number of broken promises and instead tried to contain the damage from their complaint with no real intention of getting to the bottom of things. Conservative MP Gerald D argues that the government mishandled the situation by keeping the same management at SDTC. Yeah, their conduct has given rise to this investigation, he said, where pe when people are involved in bad decisions, I'm not sure they're the best people to apply the, ensuring recommend the ensuing recommendations. A parliamentary committee is expected to hold hearings into the situation at SDTC in coming weeks. In addition, Radio Canada has learned that, office, that the Office of the Auditor General has just decided to launch an audit into the allegations raised by the whistleblowers. While it enjoys... A quiet public profile, SDTC is in the middle of a $5 billion agreement with the federal government. Its job is to redistribute this money to small and medium-sized businesses in the clean tech field, which is at the heart of the liberal government's strategy to fuel a transition to the green economy. This is akin to what Garnet Genius was asking, what is it you do, right? And they're gatekeepers. If somebody said to me, you now manage... I don't know, $80 million in government clean tech funds. And you get to hand out those projects to people that, you know, you know, in the clean tech field, or you can put out tenders or whatever you want to do. I'm now very, very rich, 80 million, hundred million dollars. I'm, I'm a person of interest to people who want money, right? And I represent a whole bunch of government money. Ka-ching, right? Super powerful. That's what SDTC is, super powerful, but like bigger than $80 million, a lot bigger than that. I don't know how bigger than that, but I'm sure bigger than that. Concerns about public funds. Radio Canada offered confidentiality to the members of the group of about 20 whistleblowers, many of whom feared professional repercussions for having denounced the situation in their current or former workplace. They're, it's basically ghost contracting. They're ghost contracting. The whistleblower first approached the Office of the Auditor General in Ottawa in November 2022 to raise concerns about the management of public funds and human resources within SDTC. They were told to send their complaint to the Privy Council Office, which receives the group's 300-page document laid out that laid out their allegations in February of this year, 23, shortly after McConnery and his team took over the file as Innovation, Science, and Economic Development. ISED hired Raymond Shabbat Grant Thornton to conduct an in-depth investigation of the facts. That contract cost, cost the government $300,000. In their first meeting, McConnery told the whistleblowers group that their work was impressive. In their complaint, the whistleblowers raised numerous examples of potential conflict of interest between the SDTC executives, board members, companies that make funding requests, and experts who evaluate the proposals. On the human resources side, the whistleblowers complained that several staff members had been unjustly fired and alleged clear cases of favoritism in the hiring and promotion process. And COVID funding criticized on financial issues. The group raised questions about new funding streams created by SDTC worth tens of millions of dollars, alleging that they were used to circumvent its funding agreement with the federal government. In addition, the group sharply criticized nearly $40 million in funding during the COVID-19 pandemic to companies that already had financing agreements with SDTC. In May, McConnery told the whistleblowers that the investigation was being, bearing fruit and that many of their allegations raised red flags. We told you we would believe you. Now we have enough evidence to tell you that we really believe you. <laughs> that means that the government will have actions to take. That's from the recordings. At the end of June, Raymond Shabbat Grant Thornton briefed the whistleblowers on their initial conclusions. They confirmed that they'd found numerous cases where SDTC did not adequately manage conflict of interest issues and where significant funding was granted outside of the applicable rules. And, and then we talk about the free money and sponsorship scandal stuff. And then all the way at the end here, it says the federal government has given SDTC until the end of 2023 to implement a series of reforms to its conflict of interest and funding policies. However, the OAG investigation and the human resources investigation are likely to disrupt this timeline, said a senior federal official who added that Ottawa was also aware of the need for the funding to continue with the clean tech community. So, man, this is this is a scandal, and it's a big one, but I don't know. It's like it's taken me 12 minutes to tell you all about it, and well, 10 minutes to tell you all about it, which is pretty big. It's like the Mark Norman thing. The Mark Norman thing I did two 30-minute episodes on because it was so big. But still, regardless of all of that, this is a big scandal. I don't know if it's, I still don't know if it's enough to take down Trudeau. It should be. It should be. If $16 orange juice was enough, this is enough. But I don't know if this is going to, if Jagmeet Singh misses out on his retirement, wouldn't that be great? Okay, here we go. Secret recordings from a, a top bureaucrat in the liberal government admit that a green fund was giving out, quote, free money. Get this. I'm going to quote, 
from the recording. It was free money, he said, before making an analogy with the controversy that affected John Chrétien's Liberal government in the 2000s. That is almost sponsor sponsorship scandal level giveaway. Wow. So when they said green fund, what they meant is putting green in the pockets of well-connected liberals. A billion dollar fund. Secret recordings. So Polyev is trying to make political hay about this, and he's not wrong, and it's something that people are going to, it's going to resonate. People don't like that. Here's Larry Brock. He's talking about the same thing. This is branding. This is everybody on message. This is everybody attacking Trudeau with, with the same kind of attack in their own unique way, right? Everybody brings to the table their own unique thing. Larry Brock was a former prosecutor. This is how he does it. Sponsorship scandal 2.0, leaked audio on the Trudeau $1 billion green slush fund scandal reveals senior officials identifies outright incompetence. Uh, they added that abuse of free money is sponsorship scandal level kind of giveaway. $40 million is under review so far. So far. It'll be more than that, probably. Here's Michael Barrett, same thing. He's got his own way. And there's a video here, but I don't know, like, I, I don't have time to go through all the videos, but these guys are posting videos. Michael Barrett says, Trudeau's billion dollar green slush fund was free money and a sponsor sh sponsorship scandal lev level kind of giveaway, according to senior government officials. After eight years of Trudeau's waste and corruption, we now have sponsorship scandal too. Yep, Ryan Williams, who's also an MP, um, member of parliament for Bay of Quinty, and he says breaking industry committee to hold emergency meeting to launch investigation into billion dollar green slush fund. Leaked audio reveals senior government officials said the slush fund was giving out free money, nearly $40 million under investigation so far. No mention of the sponsorship scandal there, right? So it's interesting how different people promote this thing, but it is being promoted. It is being shopped. It is, the, the whole purpose of that is to sell the idea that the liberals are the same now as they were then, crooked, sponsorship, scandal laden, and uh, hang that around their neck as an anchor to take them to the bottom of electoral results, right? To, to make them lose and to, to allow Mr. Polyev and the conservatives to win. So it's well coordinated and it's well thought out and the attack is meaty. So it's interesting. Expect this to be, that drum to be banged for uh, the next couple of days anyway. <laughs> National Post is reporting this, which is a different scandal, but a similar one. Canada's public health agencies lost $150 million on an unfulfilled contract last year. It won't say why. Now, did you like lose it? Like I put it in the trunk of the car and now the car's gone. Or did you lose it? Like you paid somebody for it and you know that you paid them for it. You're sure that you see the money's out, but you don't recognize that email address. Like, where's, how did you lose it exactly? Could we ask somebody about it? Is there a ticket we could open up with their support staff, right? Yes, 150 million. Okay, we've opened your ticket. Click, 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 click. I, right? What, what? We've just lost it. We've lost it and it's not coming back. Here's the National Post. I wish I was being like hyperbolic or funny, and I am kind of being funny because it's something that's outside of the norm, right? Part of the shtick of my show is like, this is the public health agency. Their job is your health and stuff, and they lost $150 million. And you would expect lost as kind of, you know, a sensational headline to drive clicks or something like that. The real answer is they just won't answer questions about it. They're not going to tell you. And that's not normal. And that's very, very outside of the norm. And it's, I mean, it's funny, but it's not funny. It's funny in that, in the way, um, if you happen upon somebody burgling your house and you're like, ha, ha ha put that back, right? Like this is funny, except that it's not at all. Here's um, <laughs> the National Post. They say it's not normal. It's public money. So you have to be accountable. Do you? Do you? The Public Health, Health Agency of Canada is refusing to disclose any information on how it lost $150 million in taxpayer money for an unfulfilled contract with an undisclosed vendor last year. I mean, the first question would be who, which vendor, what's their email address? Where did you send the $150 million? Who is the contract with, says the National Post? What was it for? Why did it go unfulfilled, leading to a loss of $150 million? These are all questions the Public Health Agency of Canada has repeatedly refused to answer. So it's not just that they lost the money. There's like a whole bunch of questions that nobody's answering anything about. The government's lack of transparency regarding any information of the contract is incomprehensible, according to three experts, including the current and former... And a, to the current and a former parliamentary budget officer. It's a large write-off. It seems wrong that the PHAC refuses to answer your question about how your money has been spent or written off. Kevin Page, 
former PBO and current president and CEO of the Institute of Fiscal Studies and Democracy, said in an email. Yeah, you'd, you'd think they'd tell you, he says. <laughs> so big scandal. We'll see if it goes anywhere. It took longer than I thought to get through it, so apologies. Moving into another liberal scandal, the carbon tax scandal that they created for themselves. Scott Moe is responding. Yesterday, I told you, after that, the after the liberals repealed or put on pause the carbon tax on home heating oil for Atlantic Canada, because Justin Trudeau was collapsing the polls out there, they put this pause on. And other people across Canada, Scott Moe, and a whole bunch of other premiers have said you should now normalize that action across Canada. And they've all said no. The liberals have said no. Champagne said no. Trudeau said no. Christia Freeland said no. Anybody who's been, been in front of a microphone has been asked the question. They've all said we're not doing any more carve outs for the carbon tax. The carbon tax is here to stay, like it or lump it. Um, so in order to get the carbon tax repealed, we'll have to remove Justin Trudeau. Fair enough. But here's the response from all of the people who heard all of the liberals say no yesterday. Scott Moe says, when asked to extend the carbon tax exemption to other forms of home heating, Trudeau tells us that we should all just buy a heat pump. The government of Canada's own website says heat pumps only work to a temperature of minus 15 to minus 25, and below that, a supplemental system must be used to provide heating. Last time I checked, it gets a little colder than that here. The Trudeau NDP government really does want to leave Saskatchewan families in the cold. Really? And, and Danielle Smith uses that same... Um, in the cold rhetoric as well. They're not joking. If you are stuck, if you're stuck and it's a little hot, if, it, if you're stuck and it's a 41 degree heat wave, man, you might be in trouble. But the sun goes down and you know, you're know you okay. If it's 41 degrees overnight, I mean, sure, it might be uncomfortably hot to sleep, but you're not gonna die. If it's minus 41 and you don't have access to a place to heat yourself up to a reasonable temperature, you're going to die. <laughs> Somebody was saying, um, oh, somebody was talking about going camping and they said, I've got my minus 10 sleeping, um, sleeping bag. And I was like, what? Minus 10 sleeping bag. We're sleeping under the stars. And, and they said, the only thing keeping me alive is the sleeping bag. And you know, blah, blah, blah. And I thought that's a terrible idea. That's like a nightmare. I'd wake up and think to myself, I've, I was dreaming. And I thought the only thing keeping me alive is this sleeping bag. And then here I am. The only thing keeping me alive is the sleeping bag. It's a nightmare. I've woken up in a nightmare. I'm sure camping outside is great, but hot is is easier to survive than cold. <laughs> Minus 41 ain't, is, is not good. It's, it's not something that should be taken lightly. Um, but any minus, minus 10, right? Minus 10, you're done. If, if you're not kitted out in the right stuff, if you can't get warm, you're done. So this idea that heating, uh, home heating oil or tax or, or, or natural gas or anything like that should be taxed, it's erroneous. It's terrible. It's a bad idea. It punishes people because you can't, you can't choose not to heat your home. You can't be like, you know, we'll just, uh, we'll get that minus 10 sleeping bag out and put it on the bed. <laughs> nope. Pure. Hello everyone. Thanks very much for watching. This is just a short version of a longer show. If you'd like to get the whole show, you can go over to canadapoly.com and sign up for a subscription. Just look in the drop down tab for shop and donate and look for subscriptions and you'll get immediate access to the full show. Love to see you. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful.